Ah, stunts. The most dangerous game. Aside from man himself, of course, but even that requires some good old-fashioned stunt work. When it comes to risking life and limb for our entertainment, some of Hollywood's finest certainly tried to outdo themselves this year. In what could have easily been a two-horse race between everybody's favorite vengeful assassin and the world's most famous top-secret spy, when it came to the IGN staff's voting, was there room for an underdog? And the answer is yes. Kinda, but also not really. This year's best stunt race was one of escalation, not just jumping from higher heights or killing goons at a geometric rate, but each of our entries seems to have figured out a way to just be more. Sequels, of course, are all we get, so in a way it makes sense that the most memorable stunts of the year were franchises one-upping their previous entries, beginning with our scrappy little kinda underdog. Netflix's extraction shares more than a little DNA with John Wick. There's a focus on fight choreography. It's helmed by a stuntman in Sam Hargrave who worked his way up through the ranks to get his shot at a director's chair. It's led by a star in Chris Hemsworth who enjoys getting his hands dirty. And thanks to Extraction 2, it's now a franchise ramping up the insanity. These men are killers. Yeah, so am I. One of the highlights of the first extraction was a lengthy one -er, or a faux one -er, at least, several shots stitched together to make one continuous bit of action. To pull it off, Hargrave strapped himself to the hood of a car to operate the camera for part of it. Naturally, the next logical place to go was to operate the camera mere feet from a helicopter landing on top of a moving train. Yeah, it was dangerous, and that's why I wanted to be the guy walking under the helicopter. Extraction 2's one -er so determinedly outdoes its predecessor's counterpart, the sun comes up part of the way through it. It's on screen longer, the stakes are bigger, the enemies more numerous and with bigger guns. Also, there was more fire. But that was nine minutes into the one and seven minutes before Hargrave moves the camera, and I'm speaking literally here because again, he had it on his shoulder for the shot, beneath the helicopter as it drops a skid onto the roof of a moving train and deposits five mercenaries to continue the pursuit of Hemsworth's Tyler Rake. Here it Better than him. It is inarguably a cool shot. One that took very real skill, care, and ingenuity to pull off, but unfortunately, one that only 4.1% of our voters thought should win. The only thing the stunt has working against it is the rest of the one -er. It's a relatively quiet moment in a 21-minute non-stop action sequence that makes up 19% of the film's runtime, in which Hemsworth would eventually blow up that same helicopter. So I guess it's easy to overlook in that respect, but an incredible feat of filmmaking in literally every other. Maybe in Extraction 3, they'll figure out how to land a train on a helicopter. Then you people will be happy. Meanwhile, in another franchise born outside of the studio system, John Wick continued to headshot his way through the fantasy realm of Hitmen in Chapter 4. This is a franchise that has arguably perfected the art of escalation. What started as a $20 million gun fu exhibition of efficiency in filmmaking ballooned into a nearly three-hour runtime and a cast of characters to match. So, it's not surprising that 16.3% of our votes went to one of the new guys. Donnie Yen's Kane, like Mark Dacascos' Zero in Chapter 3, serves the purpose of expanding the world of the franchise by way of new and eccentric characters. And thanks to god-tier escalation, an eccentric sushi chef in Chapter 3 is escalated to a blind assassin in Chapter 4 and almost steals the show. Nothing personal, John. Our voters were given the option of, quote, Kane's Osaka Hotel fight, which is fittingly nondescript. It seemed like Kane had several Osaka hotel fights, one in the kitchen against some cannon fodder, one in the weapons room with John himself, and another great one with Hiroyuki Sonata's Koji. That they all run together into a singularly votable sequence is as much a testament to Donnie Yen's charismatic brand of ass-kicking as it is to director Chad Stahelski doubling down on the right things. I'm sorry. Me too. Where narratively, the franchise has always dug deeper into the high table's lore, where the action is concerned, Stahelski digs with equal giddiness into his bag of tricks. The Osaka Continental sequence showcases Kane's ingenuity with his doorbell chimes in the kitchen, his scrambling improv skills against John, and his sense of honor against Koji. By the time we leave Japan, we know everything there is to know about Kane and what he can do. And the only thing left is to escalate it. You dead, John? 
It is literally impossible to talk about stunts in 2023 and escalation in action franchises without talking about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I tried, and I even had to use the word impossible twice in the same sentence, and I hated every second of it, but here we are. Don't be careful, be confident. Tom Cruise's lifelong dream of driving a motorcycle off a cliff was all the trailer Dead Reckoning Part 1 needed and, for better and worse, really defined the movie as a whole. We were so familiar with the image, the sheer audacity of the stunt, even how they pulled it off thanks to an extensive behind-the-scenes featurette, that much of the two hours leading up to the jump were spent just kind of wondering when the jump was coming. I would also argue, because we'd seen the practice jumps and behind-the-scenes footage so much, the digital elements of the finished product were that much more obvious. What do you expect me to do? Well, just, you know, jump. All that said, it was an incredible stunt. It combined driving skills, skydiving, and building a remote ramp on a Norwegian cliffside and was ultimately far more front and center than Extraction 2's helicopter or a sequence of Donnie Yen's blades in the front half of a three-hour bloodbath. On pure chutzpah alone, there's nothing to top it, but it still came in second place. Okay, I need you to take a step back and pull yourself together because I am under a lot of pressure right now! With a healthy 32.7% of the votes, it was on top of a lot of people lists, but it seems to have been docked a few points for a reason. To venture a guess as to why, I'd say that Ethan Hunt jumping off a cliff at that moment didn't really matter. The sequence leading up to it, with Benji helping Ethan get back on the train, is a reverse-engineered half-joke whose sole purpose is to put Tom Cruise in a spot where he needs to jump off a cliff. There is nothing organic about why he's there. Not like the reasons he climbed the Burj Khalifa in Ghost Protocol or clung to the outside of a plane in Rogue Nation. How did you get in the plane? Not in the plane! I'm on the plane! This was a stunt for stunt's sake, which, while I don't begrudge the man for doing it, did cost him the top spot in our best stunts category. But speaking of lengthy runtimes where you're just kind of waiting on a reveal of a thing you know is coming, let's get to that top spot. Well, hello again, Mr. Wick. Like struggling up a famous staircase only to fall down and have to struggle up again, I'm going to bang this escalation drum until we're all tired of it. But at 46.9% of the votes, I really believe we got this one right. This golden oldie goes out to you, Mr. Wick. The overhead shootout sequence in John Wick Chapter 4 does a little bit of everything the rest of our nominees did, and then some. It's an extended take, over two minutes with intricate choreography in a space that affords set pieces like an exploding cooktop from which to backflip. It escalates the weaponry by giving Jonathan the fiery dragon's breath shotgun shells, so his bullets literally look different. But those things aren't that different than what Jonathan's been doing for three movies in two hours to this point. What makes this set piece sing is the camera work. Suddenly, rising above the ceiling, we spin the sequence floating from room to room, watching John Wick from a wholly different angle. At this point in the movie, too, it was a much-needed bit of juice in the proceedings, as the relentless bludgeoning was starting to get exhausting. But it wasn't a gimmick for the sake of it, either. Stahelski and his team of stunt imagineers used the new camera angle to its fullest, staging battles through the walls, designing holes into the floor to give the shot vertical depth, placing a piano in exactly the right spot for a dog to jump over while a flaming man and leaves one room screaming only to enter another moments later to be shot again, keeping perfect pace with the overhead movement of the camera. His take on action and the way that action and drama and story have to kind of go hand in hand is my taste. It is a remarkable scene in a franchise built around innovative action choreography, and while nobody landed a real helicopter on a real train, I do think that nearly half of my voting colleagues nailed our pick for the best stunt sequence of the year. Well, that's how the voting came in for Best Stunt of 2023. Let us know what you think about it in the comments below. And for the rest of our awards coverage, be sure to like and subscribe to IGN.